Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. Today I am excited to share some C Sharp tips and tricks. These less unknown shortcuts and modern techniques that can help you write cleaner and more efficient code. So let's dive in. First, let us talk about pattern matching. Modern C Sharp lets you do more than just type check. You can deconstruct object with properties and positional patterns. So let's look into an example. So here I'm going to create a order object. So I can say record order and the order can have it and then a boolean is international now if we have to create a description for the order we can create a method string Describe order, and here what we can do is the GitHub Copilot is already giving some suggestion, but we will use our own because this suggestion doesn't have all the condition. We can use inline, and we can say order switch. And here, what we can do is we can say, we want to use multiple condition, we can say, is international true and weight is greater than 10. If that is the case, then we can say heavy international order. I just close this otherwise it was doing some error thing the column so let me get rid of this for the time being these are the conditions i don't want so first one i'm saying if international is true and weight is greater than 10 then heavy international order and then i can have only if international is true then order and third one I can have is weight is greater than 10 heavy order and otherwise default condition is regular order. So this concise switch expression eliminates deep nested if and clearly expresses the intent of the code. Pattern matching in my opinion is a game changer when dealing with complex conditions. And I have done a video on pattern match itself. I'm going to share it in the description. Take a look if you have not worked on pattern match before. The next one I want to talk about is discard for cleaner code. Using discard to ignore value you don't need is very powerful. Imagine a situation calling a method that returns multiple out parameter. Instead of storing unused ones, you can simply discard them. So for example, if we want to try out an example here, we can say we can say string input equal to 10. And then we can say int dot try parse input and for the result output we can just use the discard parameter which is underscore so when we do that i mean this is not a great example because you know we have to we're just taking the input and not we are doing anything with it in some cases we do need to discard parameter when we are getting multiple output but this demonstrate how we can use discard and here what happens is the 
converted output which we are parsing into in will just be discarded away. This keeps the code clutter free and focuses on the main things that matter. The next thing I am going to talk about is target typed new expression. So this has been introduced since C sharp 9 where you can use target type new expression. This means you can instantiate objects without repeating the type name. And this is very useful in cases where you are not using var to define. So for example, if I have a list of string and I say names, I can do like this or I can just go ahead and do new and this is not only reduces the verbosity but also improves readability making the code easier to maintain. Next one I wanted to cover is expression bodied members. Expression bodied members lets us write concise methods and properties. For instance, we can have int square number is equal to number time number. This is something when I showed the first example of the pattern match, I used similar concept. So here you can see it has become instead of the square doing this, we can simply write a single line expression like this. Similarly for properties we can have string get set is equal to John Doe. So this is also a single line expression. These one-liners eliminates boilerplate code and clearly show what our methods are supposed to do. After this, I want to talk about null coalescing and null conditional operators. Combining the null coalescing operator with null conditional operator to handle null gracefully can be really useful. For example, here I have a Let's name it properly. Person has name and age. So if we want to, we can create our so. Now when we are checking some property, what we can do is we can say var name is equal to and we can check for person being now, especially when it is coming from input parameter dot name. And then if person is null, of course name is going to null. If person is not null, name can also be null. In this case, if we want to set a default name, we can always do that. And here, what we are doing is we are using the null coalescing along with null conditional operator to create an expression. This technique minimizes the risk of null reference exception while keeping your code succinct. Next one I want to talk about is local function and lambda expression. So local functions and lambdas let you encapsulate helper method right where you need them. Now let's check this out. If we have process data, a function, and it takes a list int, the 
vector and let's say we want to find sum so we can say sum and we can declare it as a local function and we can do data dot sum now this is a trivial example but you can understand how useful this can be basically creating a local function and using it later now after that we can do console dot right line and we can call the sum just like a function call because we are declaring a local function with a lambda expression this keeps related code bundled together making your code modular and easier to read especially where the function can be a small function instead of bleeding it outside you can locally create the function the next one i wanted to talk is interpolated string and advanced formatting modern interpolated strings support advanced formatting options for example formatic currency is as simple as this so let's declare double price is equal to 10.52 let's say something like this and now we can do console dot write and here what we can do is we can do price and we can do 0, 0.0 price colon 0, 0.00 which will print the price to 10.35 we can run this to show the previous examples i did not run the code because it was obvious from the code what we are trying to achieve but this one it makes sense to show the output and you can see here 10.54 the other thing what we can also do is we can do as simple as this and run this and we should get the same output as expected the only difference is in this one when we had 0, 0.00 we did not have the currency mark the dollar sign was not there here we are specifically saying it's a currency with two decimal point hence it is providing the dollar also along with that that's the fundamental difference between the two the next one i want to discuss is using the name of operator using name of operator helps avoid magic strings making the code more resilient during refactoring so for example if we start with again create a class and person and then if we have new person and i have console dot right line and i want to write the name of the property person i can use name of here and if i run this it's going to print out the name similarly if i say age it's going to print out age so situation where we want to reduce typos and make code safer and easier to maintain when change occur especially for using property names the name of is very handy and it can be used in these scenarios so to wrap up this c sharp tips and tricks pattern matching discard target type new expression bodied members advanced null handling local functions interpolated strings and using of name of can truly transform your code they make your code more concise maintainable and readable if you find these tips valuable please hit the like button and if you think you are getting value out of this channel please subscribe to the channel and thanks so much for watching this video